Hey, how everybody do? So originally I had planned to do a full breakdown and showcase of this build, and then I realized it doesn't look so good. So instead, I made a lot of models, and this can be a tips video on medieval interiors. Now don't get me wrong, this was built for a single photo, and in that scene, it looks so nice. That's on my Instagram. But enough talk, let's get into it. Now, medieval floors are usually made out of two different materials. You got your wood, and then you got your stone. In my wood floor, I used a lot of plates and jumpers to get this kind of angled texture. Pretty happy with how it looks, even though it might not be the most realistic. One of the simplest ways of making a good looking wood floor is to place the tiles halfway onto the studs. This gives the uneven floorboards look, and I love it a lot. Too simple for you? How about you try out this technique by Ralph Langer? The basic idea is you get a lot of this thing, and either place it forwards or sideways in groups of two, and that gives you a really cool design. It's possible to build this technique two studs tall, but if you build it three, it gives you more flexibility with the parts you use. Ralph does it beautifully. Seriously, go check out this build in the description down below. You may have noticed the interesting textures I got going are on the sides of this. This is a technique that is used for brickwork. It uses minifigure hands and 1x2 tiles to create this awesome look. The fate of this war rests in your hands. Alright, so the next example build actually has two techniques. First starting with the wood, we can see this very simple way of building these floorboards by placing tiles and plates on their sides. The tiles are really good because of the dent they have near the bottom. This gives a nice texture and makes the whole thing look really realistic. Using just one solid color is pretty boring, but if you use like old brown and dark brown, you can add a lot of really nice highlights. And all together, it just makes it look a lot more interesting. Alright, now onto the stonework portion of this video. For our first cobblestone technique, we have this really cool looking pattern. Once I pull off a couple parts, you can see it's quite simple. It just uses bars and clips with the forward facing and sideways facing clips. This technique really did not need to be two studs tall, but your boy ran out of one by one light blay tiles, so... We got an interesting one here. You've probably noticed the pattern already, but most of these techniques have to do with snot. Yeah, man. Did somebody say snot? Ooh, that's satisfying. The main idea with this technique is five plates lengthwise is the same as five plates widthwise. So you can have these going up, down, left, right. And then boom, you got yourself a nice technique. Whew, this technique is super spicy. Like, look at this. Now, I definitely could have executed this better, but the idea is really cool. Using a lot of light bluish gray curved sort of stones using, I don't know, like curved slopes and snot bricks, and then surrounding them with the dark bluish gray as kind of like a mortar, you can get this really cool effect. This one's definitely like a puzzle, and it will take you some time to figure out how to fit everything in perfectly. I had to rush this one to make this video. I don't know, it doesn't look the worst, but anything can be better. Okay, we got another double build here. This one has one of the simplest techniques, and... Okay, I don't even want to talk about it. The parts on the right are meant to show how you can place tiles upside down and the anti-stud side gives off an interesting texture. It's not my favorite, but I've definitely seen people use it in the past, and it's alright. <sighs> but this technique on the left is by far one of the hardest things in this entire video. Originally designed by Marcel V, this is an accumulation of blood, sweat, tears, sweat, blood, tears. Good luck to all those that attempt it. It's trying to mimic a beautiful brickwork design, and it does it amazingly. It's just impossible to build. Let me try to explain it. The basic idea is that you want to see the backside of a cheese slope. If you rest them upside down 
on an axle, you can kind of get them to fit into this position where you see the backside. This is a lot easier said than done. My only advice is to angle it sideways while placing the cheese wedges in. Gravity can be a true homie sometimes. I really explained that poorly because it's super hard to show because it just takes so long. If you want to see Marcel's build, then check it out in the link in the description. Trust me, this thing is insane. We just went through nine different floor techniques, and now we're going to talk about walls. For my main build, I have a couple things going on. I have these dark brown timbers that split up the sections, and then I have a mixture between Tudor and stone for the main walls. I chose to do this because it gives a ruined look and it has a really nice texture. Oh yeah, and we can't forget the minifigure hand base that I used for the bottom. One of my favorite techniques for walls is cheese stacking. If you place a cheese wedge facing up and then a cheese wedge facing down, you can get them to line up and have a really nice texture. In this case, I used bars to achieve the stud reversal, and there's a lot of other ways of doing this. While doing cheese stacking, you might run into some problems with sizing because the two cheese slopes do not fit into the normal Lego dimension. So you'll end up having to fill some gaps. I'll talk about this a little bit later, so just keep watching the video. If we look in this corner, you can see this chunk was actually built on its side. I did this because I wanted to get a specific shape for my dirt and grime detail. Houses back then would often collect a ton of dirt in their corners because people didn't maintain them very well. Then over here, I used this weird plate technique and a Technic T-Bar to get the stud reversal. On this wall, I have three. All just using this bar stud on stud with a hole technique. I built these new separate walls to teach a specific principle. In the community, I've seen a lot of different walls that look like the one on the left. Now they're not bad, but there's some things that could be done to them to make them way better. The comparison between the wall on the left and the wall on the right is the difference between subtle detail and exaggerated detail. The wall on the left is wrong because its detail is too exaggerated, pushed out, and unrealistic. With a few minor changes, we can get it to a pretty decent looking wall. You can tell I pushed a few tiles in and tried to make the thing a lot more flat. Before I move on to the wall on the right, let me explain to you some of the techniques I used on this one. It uses a lot of headlight bricks and then the occasional masonry brick. To get the stuck out details, I used rail plates and some 1x2 tiles that slide in and out. Remember to make sure that you have them barely slid out instead of far, because this gives the more natural look. With this wall, I tried to pull out all the stops. I got upside down ingots, I got cheese stacking, and I even have old gray. Using old parts is amazing, because a lot of them are kind of yellowed and, and nasty looking, but also they, they're super chewed up and just like destroyed. This slight texture, even though it's not purest, it looks amazing in walls, and it's crazy how some of these ended up that way. This one even has some spicy looking green stuff on it. I really don't know how that got there. Yup. I mentioned before that with cheese stacking sometimes you'll need to fill some gaps. Lego neck brackets work perfect for that, and they also add a little texture to the front. If we look in the back, you can see I have two different stud reversals, one with the normal way, and then this one using the modified bar 1x2. This piece is actually really cool. It kind of has the ingot design, and it's slightly different, so you can use it to mix up your bricks. Other than that, we have a lot of areas with 1x2 tiles and plates, and then even some quarter tiles to get some nice textures. The next wall we have here was inspired by a design by Simon N.H. I don't know, this one might be my favorite. It's pretty crispy. Yo, and the back looks pretty dope as well. The basic idea is that it uses a lot of 1x2 tile sliding and then these rail plates. If a rail plate is indented on a jumper, it gives this slight texture and indent that you can't get with normal plates. Now, let's talk about Timbers and Tudor. 
On the top I have three different examples of angling timbers. Starting with the simplest one, you basically just place a 1x4 tile on the snot brick and angle it. The next technique is actually quite simple. It just uses a normal 2x3x1 slope and an inverted 2x3x1 slope. If you line them up, then it creates this perfect channel for the two plates to fit in. Now we got some more wacky stuff. The 1x2 cheese slope is really good for crazy medieval angles. And I just have these 2x2 tiles connected with clips and hinge bricks. Angled timbers can really break up the straight and even lines that you'll usually see on these medieval buildings. And it just makes the whole building look cooler and more complex. On the bottom here are some simple Tudor patterns going from the simplest to the most complex showing how you can add the dirt gradients and different textures. The simplest one is simple because it, everything is studs standing straight up. I made sure to not use bricks though because the plates give more texture and look better. For my color gradient I went from dark tan to tan and that's what I usually end up doing. You can also add in olive if you're feeling really frisky but you know. The one next to it gets a little more complicated because it has some cheese stacking and then a portion that's placed on its side. For the cheese stacking I actually didn't have a bracket in white and so there's some gappage there but it's it's fine. No it looks pretty bad actually. But for the snotted portion I wanted to fill this gap and so I found out that using a window pane like the old window pane piece worked really well to fill those gaps. So if you run into any like snot and then lego dimension problems just find a part that fills gaps. For this third one we got some really cool combinations of parts. At least I can say that for the bottom part. That top strip uh, I don't know but the bottom looks so good because of the cheese stacking in multiple directions and then also this discolored one by one plate. Like I said before, discolored parts work really well with color gradients. I don't know, I really like this one because of how well things fit into place. Here's another model with me just playing around with angled timbers. This one actually uses 1x2 curve slopes to create this like pillowy X. And then of course I use bars in the back to do the stud reversal. Alright, so if you remember back to my main build, I used a mixture between Tudor and stone and that's because I wanted to show that the Tudor was kind of dilapidated and being destroyed. But you may also notice that at some points this Tudor is a stud thick. Realistically, Tudor is very thin. And so I instantly went to Ralph's page and started looking at his great inspiration for thin Tudor mixed with stonework. Just one second, let me point out this nice discolored gradient. I like it. Anyways, I used a bar in the back so I could get this slight indent with the stonework. I love bars because they allow you to get infinite possibilities with your spacing. I think all the texturing I used in this wall is really great and I'd love to experiment more with it in the future. Speaking of experiments, I had a lot of fun messing around with this droid arm technique for bricks. It gives this mangled interesting look, I don't even know, it's, it's kind of cool. It is quite tricky to fit the casing around, but you'll figure it out. <sighs> okay, that was an overload. I tried really hard to make this video fast and quick, but oh my gosh, it's already 15 minutes long. Never mind that. Okay, thank you guys so much for all the love recently. You know, we've passed 500 subscribers. That's crazy. I think we might actually be on 600 now. Who even knows? Like, you guys are the best. I would have hoped to make a full medieval interior tutorial talking about windows and all the other things you'll see in interiors but this video is like way too long to begin with if you guys want to see that i don't know just give a dislike tell me which technique was your favorite and especially if you've got this far in the video most people don't i really don't know what to keep saying but i hope this was helpful goodbye adios sajin Goodbye. Okay. See you later.